Hello and welcome again to CIS 165 JavaScript Programming. I'm Victor Campos. So lesson seven is upon us. And here we have uh, jQuery as the big idea that we're going to deal with. Up until this point, for about 300 pages in the book, we've been working with plain vanilla JavaScript. And it's worked really well. But modern websites now also rely on frameworks like jQuery, which allow you to write less code to make things easier. Shortcuts. jQuery's motto is write less, do more. So instead of writing a long statement in plain vanilla JavaScript, you write a shorter one in jQuery, and it just works. Let me show you the end result of what we're going to have, and then we'll start to put it together. This is going to be the Star Wars Droid Name Generator. Now, first of all, when I loaded this up, you may have noticed a little bit of a fade animation. We'll be able to do this very easily with jQuery. So the point of this is that you enter your name and your birth date, and then you will get a Star Wars droid name. So you too can be a cool little droid from Star Wars. So let's say I'm putting my name, uh, putting a birthday, and then I'll say go. Victor Campos, your droid name is VI1. You are an astromech droid. Cool. Let's say another name, John Williams, born in, I don't know, May 2nd, 1950. Go. John Williams, your droid name is J5W8. You are a battle droid. One more. Um, let's say 707-1999. Carrie Fisher, your droid name is 777. You are a medical droid. So this generates some format of droid names and numbers and picks a type of droid. And there's also a little bit of animation that happened there. Did you see the fade in? If I tried to complete this form without filling all the fields, please enter all fields. So that's what we're going to create together. I'm going to set myself up with Visual Studio and a new lesson 6 folder, as always. So I've got a folder for lesson 7 for practice, and I'll open up Visual Studio Code, close any previous projects, and open the current one. I'll write some quick information at the end. This is our Star Wars droid name generator. Quick description. Using jQuery, create a program that lets a user become a droid. This will be due on November 7th. Put a quick title. Lesson 7 practice. And on the heading 1, Star Wars Droid Generator. OK, so we'll need an input form and then extensive JavaScript. In the body, I'll create a form. Give that an ID so that we can reference it via JavaScript. We'll call this SW form. We're going to do something new here. This will be a field set. The field set will allow us to do a little bit of design and group the elements of our form together. 
the field set has a legend. And that will be about you. This is information that you will fill in. Taking a quick look at that, it's a box like that. I'm going to need a label. where the user will type their first name. This label needs a for attribute because this label will be used for an input. We'll call this in first. Next to it is the actual input of type text. We're going to accept some text, a placeholder, for example, the first name. This needs a name attribute, which will be the same as the for, and then an ID attribute, same thing. Break the line there, and then do the same thing. Another label. This will be last name for in last input of type text again placeholder an example of a last name name field in last and ID in last break that to the next line We'll need another label. This time for birthday, but also with a for attribute. This will be in DOB, in input. This one will be different. Type of date. So we've got type of text and type of date. This will accept dates. No placeholder here. But it needs the name attribute in DOB and the ID in DOB. Break that. Outside of the field set, I'll create a paragraph. Where I'll display a couple of buttons. So this will be of type button. Value of what to show on the button will say go. And an ID, btn go. Next to it, I'll put another input. Another type of button. Value clear. This will clear my form fields. And then an, an ID of btn clear. Saving that and checking the result. We've got some input fields, a go button, and a clear button. I'm going to write some quick CSS to style the form a little bit. So back to my code in the CSS block. Um, first of all, the field set is too big. So I can easily redefine the field set. We'll say a width of 10m. What that does is, now my box doesn't extend so far out. OK, so then we're going to need a spot to display the results of taking the names and the birthday and displaying the actual droid name. So after the form, I'll create a div.
that'll have an ID of div show. And then inside we'll have some more divs. So your name. your droid name and your droid type. Each of these will have an ID. We'll do div u div droid div type. The result is those will be displayed there eventually. What I actually want to do is hide those fields until I need to populate them. So I'll write some CSS to hide. What I can do is say div u comma div droid comma div type. I'm going to apply the same CSS to all three of those at once, separating them by commas. Display none. So now those will be hidden until I choose to call to view them. All right, so this uh, pretty much works through JavaScript, and we're going to focus on jQuery. So before we write our custom JavaScript, we need to set up a reference to the jQuery library. We can either download the file and include it in our project or reference it by the online version. I'm going to reference it by the online version. And the way I would do that is I can go to the web browser, go to jQuery.com, there will be a download button, but we're not going to download it. We'll click there and we'll say, okay, let's use the compressed production ready version of jQuery from the server. No need for us to download it. We'll just connect to it from the official jQuery site. So I can right click the link and copy the link address. I don't have to actually download the file. I'll copy its address on the website. And so this script tag will be used to link to that jQuery file on the server. That needs an attribute of source. And I will paste the link that I got from the jQuery mobile site. Now we cannot write this source in the existing script tag. It's either or. We use this pair of script tags to link to the jQuery library. Then we use this pair of script tags to write our custom JavaScript. We cannot mix the two. So now I'll start to write my custom JavaScript. Previously we were writing the iffy like this. This will still work, but we'll follow the book's suggestion and use the jQuery focused iffy. If you don't change this, it'll still work, but we're going to use the new method, which is we no longer need the ending pair there of parentheses to execute the anonymous function, but what we need is the dollar symbol at the beginning to show that we're going to use jQuery. So notice the difference. Dollar symbol at the beginning, no closing double parentheses. I'll still break the curly braces and use the strict declaration. Maybe make a note up here using the new jQuery iffy. jQuery iffy does not need closing 
parentheses. Okay, so the motto of jQuery is write less, do more. What I need to do is create various JavaScript objects to reference various HTML nodes. So again, we'd be creating variables. And normally I would have something like thing equals document dot get element by ID. And in there in quotes, I would say the thing. Well, with jQuery mobile, I'm able to do thing equals dollar parentheses quotes pound the thing. These two lines are equivalent. The top one line 34 is plain vanilla JavaScript and line 35 is jQuery they both do the same thing but write less do more now also when we create a variable through jQuery it's common practice to put the dollar symbol in front of the variable that denotes that this variable was created via jQuery I'll write that in some notes in a moment but what I want to do then is create some variables to hold the elements on screen. For example, the form. So dollar el sw form. That's my Star Wars form. That's equal to dollar quotes pound sw form. That is from line 13. And the jQuery object selector is that syntax, dollar symbol, parentheses, then in quotes, which element? Comma, because I'm also going to create L btn go, and that's based on the dollar jQuery selector pound btn go. I need L btn clear. And that's pound btn clear. I need to define elements for those divs. So l div u comes from pound div u. You're going to need to get used to right away that now that we no longer use document dot get element by id, we have to include the the pound symbol in the parentheses when selecting the ID. L div droid. And finally, L div type. End of line there, I've created all my objects. I'll do a save, open it up in my browser. I'm going to confirm in the console that nothing weird is going on. It looks good. Well, if we've created references to these objects via jQuery, we have to remember to keep then using jQuery to manipulate them. So some notes here. Creating variables via jQuery. Common practice to use a dollar in front of the variable name. If you create a jQuery based variable, you must then use jQuery methods on it. If you create a plain vanilla JavaScript variable, you must then use 
plain vanilla JavaScript methods on it. So some of these methods and properties that we've used on previous lessons, uh, we won't be able to then use them on these jQuery based variables. So that's something else to get used to. For example, if I had var, if I had a variable called my div, I would then do dot inner HTML equals to h1 hello. Well, that's plain vanilla JS. Now, if I had created it with uh, jQuery, I'd have dollar my div, and then I'd have to write dot HTML method, and in there, h1 hello. You see the difference there. That's jQuery. A different command, basically, depending on how the object is created. The .html method, if it's jQuery, and the .inner HTML property, if it's plain JavaScript. We'll get used to it. So the first little bit of jQuery that we'll do here is I want to animate those fields appearing on screen. I want to animate these elements fading in. It's pretty easy to do. So we've got the label elements and the input elements. I did not create jQuery elements for them, but on the fly, I can still reference them via jQuery. So our syntax is always going to be something like this, dollar symbol, parentheses, and quotes. I'm going to say label any elements in the HTML, which are labels, what we will do is, first of all, we will dot hide them. So the hide jQuery method, let's hide all our labels so that then dot fade in. Next, we'll say any elements that are inputs first hide them, then fade them in. And this is chaining. This is another great feature of jQuery. We can basically add more methods in a chain, and they all happen in sequence. I'm going to save that. I'm going to refresh and see the result. Look at that. There's a nice little fade in happening. We can, of course, control the speed of the fade in the argument here. I'm going to say, uh, have the labels fade in, I'll, I'll make it really obvious, have it take 3,000 milliseconds, and then have the inputs take 4,000 milliseconds. So those are fading in, one slower than the other. Too slow. But you get the idea here. You can control the speed. And this is, of course, in terms of um, milliseconds, which translate to 1,000 is one second. So I'm going to say here, I'm going to say here, fade in the uh, labels for 1,000 for 1,000 milliseconds, and then fade in the inputs in one and a quarter seconds. There you go. OK. So the users will type in first name, last name, birthday, some magic will happen, and it'll say your name is whatever droid name and your type is whatever droid type. So I'm going to create an array of droid types that will be randomly chosen. I'll say here then where I was creating variables, create another variable. This one will be droid type. This will be an array. And I spent some time over on wikipedia.com, which is the Wikipedia of Star Wars. And here's a few types of droids from Star Wars. There's the astromech droid, a battle droid, an interrogation droid, medical,
protocol and scout droid. So the user will be one of these types of droids after they enter their information. We're going to need to activate those buttons. So we've got the L B T N go. We're going to use the on method. So on the event of something, do something else. On the event of a click, we will run a function such as uh, droidify. That's the jQuery method way of doing it. The plain vanilla JavaScript would have been something like lbtn go dot on click equal to droid if I. In this case, jQuery is slightly more verbose, but it's more powerful. So what I will be doing here then is running a function after the button is clicked. So my function will be function make droid. I don't put the parentheses here or else the function would execute immediately. I don't want it to execute until the button is pressed. I also want lbtn clear to be active. When a click occurs, run function clear. It's best practice to define our functions first and then create these event handlers. So what these are here are jQuery event handlers. In the event of a click, run the specified function. So we'll define our functions before our event handlers. All right, define functions before event handlers. So first we'll start with the simpler function clear. Same syntax as before, that doesn't change. And what the purpose of this function is, is upon the L Star Wars form object.reset method. Now there's a little quirk here. Uh, we have to say in uh, array syntax the zero width form reset it. So I'll save it, refresh. Well, I tried to refresh a little too early because I'm referencing a make droid function, which I haven't made yet. So jQuery is going to freak out and say, we don't have that function yet. Let me make the skeleton of it. Uh, and then I'll test my clear. This is, this is not going to work because of the error. So jumping ahead a little bit. Um, function fn make droid. And uh, nothing will happen just yet. I just need to define that function before I try to test it. Because line 56 wants to use it. OK. So what I meant was, if I were to type something into these fields and click Clear, the form gets cleared. In Chrome, do you also see you have a little drop-down calendar, which can be filled in? And that'll be cleared. In other browsers, you may not get the calendar, but you'll still get this date field. So our clear button works now. Now we need to make our make droid function work. This is based on the input fields that the user has available to them. In first, in last, and in date of birth. So within the make droid function, we will create some variables via jQuery again. This will be val in first. And that comes from in first. I also need val in last. 
that comes from in last. And val in dob comes from in dob. End of line. Now, this would be referencing the complete object, every property of those objects. So the in first object up here, every property. I only need to know what the person typed into the input field. I only need to know the value of what they've typed. So actually, we will then say dot val method. That's the jQuery method to check what did the person type into that input field. So I'll need that for each of these. And to check the results, I can say console log val in first, comma val in last, comma val in dob. So I can output each one of these objects in the same console output with a comma. Checking my results. So John Smith, born on January 1st, 1980. Go. Whoops, check your spelling, of course. Uppercase there. Sorry about that. John Smith, January 1st, 1980, go. There you go, John Smith, 1980-1-1. Okay, well, I need the person to type each one of these fields. They need to fill in something to each one of these fields or else give them an error because that's not enough complete information. We know that output works, so I'll remove that console. And what we need is an if statement. An if else statement. Something is going to get checked. And if it doesn't work, do something. If it does work, do something else. Let's deal with the else first. If they don't type in all fields, we'll display a message on screen. We have the L div u element. We can change its HTML and say, please enter all fields. I want to do a, an animation to that as well. So first I have to dot hide the element so that then I can dot slide down the element. So that message will slide down. That will happen in the event of the user not typing in something to all of those fields. So that's where if comes in here. We're going to say in parentheses again here, val in first exclamation equals equals open and close quotes. So exclamation is not. If the first name is not equal to empty, so that means they typed something into the first name box. And they typed something into the last name box. So I'll add double ampersand shift seven to then check also for val in last not equal to empty. So they had to have typed something into the first name, something into the last name, and something into the date of birth. So same concept, val in dob not equal to empty. We'll just say something here, console all fields filled. Or else, at least one of those fields is empty, and therefore display a message. So I won't fill any of the fields and click Go. 
please enter all fields. If I did type something into all of the fields, even if it's gibberish at the moment, all the fields were filled. So if I type two out of three fields, please enter all fields. That's what this three-part if statement is checking for. All three of these have to be true. The and here says this needs to be true, this needs to be true, this needs to be true. If all of those three are true, then proceed. If any of them is false, then you go to else. So if all of the three fields are true, the first thing we're going to do is create a variable to help us pick one of the droid types. We'll call this random droid. And that's made from math.random. That's plain old JavaScript there. Random number based on, so times droid type dot length the total number of droids that I have saved in my array. So some random number based on um, the number of droids I have saved. Well, I'm going to need to round that down. So I'm going to encompass all of that in parentheses so that I could do math.floor. This will round the numbers down to include 0, because I want to choose the 0 with droid type, which is astromech. We've dealt with random numbers plenty of times before, so that's creating a random number so that we can choose one of the droid types from the array. I want to display the user's name as they entered it on screen. So we have ldivu.html. Let's write some HTML in that div. We will display val in first the first name that they typed plus quotes space plus val in last that will simply display the user's name for a little visual interest dot hide dot slide down so what that, that will do is simply display the user's name again So if I type in a name, birthday doesn't matter just yet, go, it'll say the name. So that's the starting point. I also want to start to set myself up so that these fields clear out after I click go. I can do that now actually. Um, give myself some space here and function clear. Clear out those form fields after successfully inputting a name. All right, so the user's name is displayed on screen. That's nice. Next, we want to display their droid type based on my array. So L div droid html method I'll have it first say your droid type is plus from the droid type array we will choose a random droid that's a random number to then choose a random position in the array and so I'll do the same thing here that's hidden so I have to slide down to make it visible. There we go. Victor Campos, your draw type is medical. If I do that again, since it's random, I'll get a different result. Victor Campos, your droid type is Scout. All right, so that's showing up there. I'd like it a little bit, I'd like it to animate a little bit different. This will be subtle, but I want the droid type to display slightly later 
than the person's name. So in addition to hiding, then sliding in the droid type, before that I'm going to say dot delay method. Pause for about two seconds to give people time to see the regular name, the droid name, which we haven't done yet, and then the droid type. So first name, last name, birthday. There you go. Okay, so next comes the actual droid name generator. In the order of things, the person's name is displayed first. We have it up here. The person's name is displayed first, then their droid name, then their droid type. So before your droid type is, we're going to do the part about the, the droid name. L div. Oh, I made a little mistake here. L div type and then L div droid. So sorry about that. Be careful there. L div droid is where we're going to display the droid name, and L div type is where we display the droid type. So We'll say your droid name is plus. And what will happen here is some function droid name gen, a droid name generator. This will be a function that we're going to create in just a moment. I want to also hide that, then delay one second, and then slide down. So function droid name gen. I need to define that function, and I need to pass in some arguments. I need to pass in first name, last name, and birthday. I'm going to pass in then val in first, comma, val in last, comma, val in dob. Those are the three bits of data that were collected from the form. Well, collect those, pass them into function droid name gen, and then process them. I need to get outside of this function so that I can define what does that do. But before that, I can write a couple comments. This obviously create variables. Line 57 is about check that all three boxes, all three input boxes are filled in. when not all three input boxes are filled in let the user know generate a random number based on the length of the droid array and all of these are show feedback on screen with some animation this one the big idea is run the function to generate the droid name.
this line is end of function make droid, just so that I don't lose track of it as my code gets longer. Next line, we will then need to define what function droid name gen means. And function droid name gen, as we saw previously, passes in some arguments. We'll say that we've got n1, n2, and dob, name1, name2, and date of birth. Those are the three parameters of this function, and we see that we've passed those arguments in back on line 61. The way that this works to create these droids is based on the user's month, birth month. We've got 12 months to choose from. So therefore, I'll create a variable called mo. This is the month. And this comes from the user's date of birth. Now, we need to do something very creative here. Date of birth in Chrome gives us a sort of like a number looking like result. But it's not exactly a number, so we need to extract only the month from what the person typed into the date of birth box and then actually convert it to a real number. So we'll say dot slice. Slice is plain old JavaScript, but we are going to slice a piece of the string that we're getting in the date of birth. And this works by saying starting at index 5 and going to 7 exclusive. So between positions 5 and 6, only capture that. And that is based on if the person typed something like, you know, 1980, 1978-0202, that would be, okay, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, but not 7. So it would capture the month in that string. We're slicing from that string, keeping only positions 5 through 6, 7 not included. If a person typed a birthday like 1, 4, um, 1999, we have something similar. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, but not 7. So it would grab different pieces of the number that the birthday is, and then we need to convert that to a real number. So what we'll do is we will wrap parentheses all around that because we need to use the method the global method parse int that's plain JavaScript there and lastly inside the parentheses comma 10 is going to be base 10 so whatever we've sliced from the date of birth let's parse it as an integer with base 10 at the end of that line, add a comma because we've got one more variable to create. My droid. The actual droid that we're going to display on screen, which will be a string, an empty string at the moment. There is the possibility that the person types in a date of birth in a, in a way that's not expected. Therefore, we will not get a number from parse int. We will get an object known as nan. NAN, not a number. So in the event of getting not a number, we have to generate a number. So first we need to do an if check. If is not a number. And notice the particular way it's spelled. We're checking is month, is it NAN, is it not a number? If it's not a number, Let's generate a number. Or else it is a number and don't do anything. So within the if block, we will then set month to a math.random based on 12, because there's 12 months. And that will need to be rounded 
seal, because we're going to start from 1, from 1 to 12, so we round it up, semicolon. So if that birthday is, a, is not a real number, let's make a real number based on 12. Or else, we don't even need else, don't even do anything. If it's not a number, if it's not not a number, it is a number, so don't do anything. Month is properly defined. Next line here. So here is where we actually, based on what the user typed, um, generate that droid name. This will be based on a switch. On a switch statement, the general skeleton looks like that. So we're going to check for some possible options. I'll get back to that in a moment after switch. Then we have to say return my droid. My droid will say the name of one of these little droids and therefore we need to return that out of the function name gen to actually display it on screen. So switch will be a little complex. So let me write some comments before we proceed. I'll say here function with three parameters first name, last name, date of birth. Line 71 based on the month of date of birth, create a base 10 number. String to display the droid name. If the month variable is not a number, create a random number based on 12 possibilities. Round it up. The return statement after the droid name creation return the string back to the rest of the program. Switch based on the month variable. Pick a droid name scheme. So again, doing research over at wikipedia.com, there's a variety of types of droid names, such as R2-D2, C3PO, IG-88. So they have this sort of scheme of names. Based on the month, then, choose a scheme to assign to the person based on their name. So we're checking based on what month the person input. We're going to say we'll have a case of 1. If the month was 1, if it was January, the type of name will be droid designation BT1. break that because the a name was chosen. Well, we could have a case of 2 February. That is going to be the scheme of R2 D2. Break because then those we've chosen a, a scheme. Okay, we could have a case of the third month there's a type of droid with a designation of C3PO. Break. 
So we could do one for all 12 months. We'll do case of four. There's a droid called four lom. Break. I'll do the other possible cases in a moment, but the final case is the default case. If I did not choose 5 through 12, then I've hit the default case. And the default case is a droid designation of 0 0 0. We can do a quick test so far. It's not complete yet. Let's see what we have. So if I type in a name and then a, a January birthday, any kind of January birthday, go. OK, so it sort of worked. It did show BT1, but I get an error here. Hide is not a function. Let's check line 61. Line 61, I'm trying to hide. And my mistake is that I added hide at the wrong point. Let's look at how I properly did it for the other parts. I did um, line 60, HTML, and then dot hide, and then HTML dot hide. Well, my problem is that I forgot to close the HTML uh, parentheses before then adding the hide method. So here, I didn't close that parenthesis until all the way at the end. That's wrong. That parenthesis should be closed right after HTML. So those parentheses match up right there. Then dot hide, then dot delay, then dot dot slide down and no double parentheses like I had a moment ago that got away from me so now if I save it and I run it let me refresh all of that Victor Campos January any January birthday go BT1 okay I have a February case, R2D2. I don't have an October case, just to get ahead there. So I don't have an eighth month. So it's zero, zero, zero. This console output is just there for me to figure out how to create that style of droid name based on the user's input. So for case one, month one, January, we'll say my droid, that's my string that holds the droid's name, based on n1, which is the value of the first name, dot slice, we're using slice again to grab a piece of the string. We'll start from the zero width position, which is the very first letter, comma, two. So we're going to go from zero to two, not including two. So it's going to be the first letter and the second letter, not the third letter, plus dash plus month semicolon. So that's going to slice the first two letters of the person's name, add a dash, and write the month, which would be a 1. So if I write Victor Campos, January birthday on screen, your droid name is VI1. Your droid type is medical. So VI1 is the style of droid of BT1. If I'm George Lucas, born in January, then I get George Lucas. Your droid name is GE1. So that's the style of droid. Now, uh, it's capital B, capital T, dash 1. 
And if a person typed their name normally, they would not have a capital letter on both their letters of their name. So I need to force those letters to capital letters. So we will add n1.slice dot to uppercase method. Take whatever those pieces of the string are and capitalize them. So now if I'm George Lucas, I wish, and I put that into January, we have GE-1. All right, let's say we wanted to create an R2-D2 style droid name. So I'm going to say my droid. And this works um, because whatever is in the case one block executes and then break executes and nothing else. If instead case two block is executed, we have the break and nothing else executes. The way we create an R2-D2 style droid name is, again, we take n1.slice. This time we're going to say between 0 and 1. So take only the first letter of the first name. Force that to upper just in case. Then we're going to display the month, which is 2. Then we're going to have the dash. Then we're going to have from the last name, let's slice the first letter of the last name force that to uppercase plus the month which is again the number two so if I'm George Lucas born in February I get George Lucas your droid name is G2L2 your droid type is Scout Case 3 is of type C-3PO. My droid is equal to first name dot slice. Again, we only need the first letter of the first name, so to uppercase. Then we need the dash. the month because that'll be a three then from the last name we will slice the first two letters of the user's name and to uppercase so that it looks like it's supposed to and then end Checking that result, George Lucas, born on the third month. George Lucas, your droid name is G-3LU. It's in the style of C-3PO, G-3LU. Your droid type is interrogation. So I've got case four and default. Part of your homework will then be to create designations for 5 through 12. But let's do two more to get into the practice of how this works. So case 4. It's in the style of 4-L-O-M. So we will say my droid is equal to the month, which will be 4. That's why we're in this case section, plus Let's say we'll take uh, from the first name again, the first letter of the first name to uppercase. Then we'll take the first two letters of the last name. So from the last name, we will slice the first two letters of the last name. And the result is George Lucas, born on the fourth month. George Lucas, your droid name is 4GLU. 
oops, I forgot one little thing. We want four dash lom. So I need four dash glue. That means I missed right here. We show the month, then a dash, then the rest of the name. And continue the string. So that'll be the four, the dash, and then the LOM part of the name. Try that again. George Lucas, born on four, four. George Lucas, your droid name is four glue. 4-GLU, just like the style of 4LOM, medical droid. And lastly, if I did not make a case for the other possibilities, which are 5 to 12, because remember, Mo is based on the month of the user's birthday, we have the default. And in this case, we have droid designation 000. So this one will be my droid. Is equal to month plus month plus month. Well, we need those dashes. Don't forget the dashes. So that's actually dash plus dash. So month dash month dash month. So I don't have a fifth month. George Lucas, your droid name is 555. I don't have a twelfth month. George Lucas, your droid name is 121212. Your droid type is Astromech. So there we go. We've got our Star Wars droid generator. The person types a last name, a first name, a birthday, and you get a cool droid name. Let's say Natalie Portman. And she was born on... Uh, uh, let's say March 22nd, 1985. Natalie Portman, your droid name is N3PO. Your droid type is Astromech. So at this point, I'm finished with the project. I'll write a few more comments. Switch statement, based on the month variable, pick a droid scheme. So use dot slice to pick portions of the name typed. Dot to uppercase method forces letters to uppercase and yes there's also two lowercase if you need it each case is based on the month the user typed In the event of a case I didn't think of, default takes over. Each block ends with a break. No other code from the switch then runs. Your homework will then be to, of course, write this program and complete the other cases. Cases 5 through 12. 
I'll give you a brief hint here. You may want to pause the video. We did BT1, R2D2, C3PO, 4 LOM. You might want to think about R5G8, IG88, EV99, C110P, B1, and PIP2. Did you get that? Go back and pause if you didn't. So you'll have to complete all of those and complete them and turn them in by the deadline, which will be November 7th. And this has been the Star Wars Droid Name Generator. And I've been Victor Campos for CIS 165 JavaScript Programming. See you next time.